Hi guys, welcome to video 1.3. This is our third video of chapter one. Um, so what we're going to cover in this video is we're going to look at the actual environments in which large scale organisations operate. Um, you may have heard this before from if you did units one and two. So there's two main types, they're internal and external, but we can break that down to three. Internal, operating and macro environment. So let's get into it. So first of all, um, the term environments is used to sort of describe the actual context in which business is carried out. So remember, we're just looking at large organisations. Um, so there's two main environments, the internal, you might also hear it called the micro environment, and the external environment. So when we, we'll just look at the internal for starters. So that are things that the organisation has the most control over. Um, they, these factors impact them directly, but the organisation has the most control over them out of all the environments. So for example, their employees or their people, they don't have full control over their employees. Or they can tell them what to do and things like that, but the employees also can demand better wages, better working conditions, they can go on strikes. So they don't have full control, but they do have um, a fair amount of control over their employees. Their resources, so their buildings, land, and any money that they have or machinery, they have full control or almost have full control over that. Um, any policies or procedures that the organisation has, they can create them. They obviously have to be in line with, um, with the law, so occupational health and safety laws, all their policies and procedures need to fit in with those. Their culture, they have a fair amount of control over that. They can obviously employ the, the people that they want. Um, they can create the values that they're after, but they can't fully control um, the thoughts and feelings of every employee in the, within the organisation. That's what part of culture is. And the day-to-day -day tasks, how they're carried out, the processes. So that's the internal environment. The external environment, we break it up into two areas. So they are things that the organisation either has some control over, but not as much as the internal environment, or they have virtually no control over. So we'll start off with the operating environment. Um, this is uh, factors that are external to the organisation, but they have a direct impact on the organisation. Um, so things like customers, suppliers, competitors, and any kind of special interest groups like a trade union, the ACCC, we'll talk about them later on, but that's essentially consumer protection uh, agency that stops you from price fixing and things like that. Um, so your customers, you still have a fair amount of control over them. You, they obviously make the decision whether they buy from you or not, um, but they're in the operating environment. Suppliers, they're the ones that provide raw materials. Competitors, obviously, uh, the people that you're competing against in terms of selling the same or similar products or service. And as I said, special interest groups. So these are the operating environment of things that you have um, some control over and they have a direct impact on the operations of your business. Now the macro environment, this is the second part of the external environment. This is broad. They have an indirect impact on the operation of a business and the organisation has virtually no control over them. So things like the economic, the state of the economy, economic environment, um, they ha it has a major impact on an organisation. So, but the organisation has no control over the economy. So things like inflation rate, the level of employment, interest rate, wage rates, um, foreign exchange. So there's a lot of organisations at the moment because the Australian dollar is quite high that are really hurting. So the car industry, they're not, they can't export as many cars as they used to because they're more expensive to other countries. So all these things have a direct or an indirect impact on the organisation and they, the organisation has virtually no control over them. Technological factors are another one in the macro environment. So the, whole, the world is creating new technology all the time. It's continuously driving change. Um, and it's up to the organisation whether they keep up with that or not. And sometimes if they don't, they may be left behind. Uh, legal and political. So it could be any changes in workplace laws, in employer relations laws, which is uh, what our wages and conditions are determined by. Um, or it could be some kind of occupational health and safety law that now the organisations have to abide by any of those. 
um, have a major impact on an organisation. Environmental, so that could be that, well, one, that consumers are being more environmentally aware and um, that's why a lot of people are buying smaller cars, less uh, smaller carbon footprint, etc. Social attitudes, um, so McDonald's is a great example there where people wanted healthier menus. Um, Subway became the fastest growing food franchise in Australia and McDonald's had to adapt and realise that this is what uh, people wanted, they wanted healthier food, so they created a healthier menu. So that's, they're the three environments. Um, just remember that there's internal and external, and also remember that the uh, external, there are two factors, there are, or the two environments, there's the operating environment and the macro environment.